guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Erica. I'm a small business owner and I put out a lot of small business related content to help other small business owners along with a lot of crafting tutorials, not only to show my fellow small business owners like different products that they can make, but also in case there's any of you at home that are passionate about crafting like I am and you just like to craft and make your own DIY projects. All right, you guys, so I am super stoked to jump in today's video because I'm gonna be redoing an oldie but a goodie. So if you've been following me for a while on here or my Instagram or TikTok or whatever, you should know that I make a ton of car freshies. And last year I came out out with my very first car freshie tutorial and you guys loved it so I figured why not redo that video because since I posted that video I have made thousands of car freshie you guys literally thousands no exaggeration so with that being said I've learned a lot of tips and tricks along the way that I would like to share with you guys so I basically just want to do like an updated version of a car freshie tutorial sharing all of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way while also addressing a lot of like frequently asked questions that I get all the time so if you've never made a car freshie or you haven't watched a lot of car freshie tutorials or maybe you're just new to the car freshie game then I definitely recommend sticking around to the end of the video because I'm going to be sharing a lot of good tips and tricks and answering a lot of frequently asked questions that you may have yourself. So without further ado, if you're interested in seeing how I make my car freshies, then keep watching. So real quick, I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to make your own car freshies at home. And as always guys, I'm going to link all of my supplies down below in the video description. So if you guys are wondering where I'm getting anything or how much something is or whatever, check out the video description down below and I will link as much as I can. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need is aroma beads. Now, basically aroma beads are a recycled plastic pellet is how almost every website would describe it um just to show you guys like what they look like if you've never you know made freshies before or anything but this is what the freshie is made out of and the beads actually absorb all of the fragrance oil and that's what makes the freshie smell now there are several different places that i buy my aroma beads along with my fragrance oils but sometimes i do order them off of amazon um i do like the company buy it ship it um, they have an Etsy shop. They have their own website, I believe, and they also sell on Amazon so you can find them literally everywhere. But that's one of the number one aroma bead companies that I use. Now I will say whether you buy from them or any other aroma bead company, nine times out of 10, when you get your beads, you will have to air them out. And what I mean by that is when you first get your aroma beads from any company, nine times out of 10, they are going to smell almost like Elmer's glue, Sometimes they have like a vinegar smell to them. They just smell like plastic and it just really hangs on to that smell. So it is imperative that you open your bag or box, however you got them, and let them completely air out for a while until they do not have a smell at all. Otherwise, you're just gonna be pouring fragrance oil on top of that and you're going to smell that gluey vinegar smell through the fragrance oil and then your entire freshie will smell like trash even after you've baked it. So just do yourself a favor and make sure you air out your beads until they no longer have a smell. Sometimes I only have to air mine out for a few days and then I don't really smell them and sometimes I've had to let mine air out for two or three weeks until I didn't smell them anymore. Typically when I order my beads I order like 25 to 50 pound bags of aroma beads at a time so I have really big Rubbermaid containers that I pour my beads into so it's like a really big surface area so they kind of air out a little bit faster versus if you just like open the bag or the box they came in the beads at the bottom aren't really getting the air out only the beads on the top so i will say if you are going to air out your beads try to put them in something that has a larger surface area so that all of the beads get to air out equally the next thing you're going to need is some fragrance oil um, i got this fragrance oil from candlescience.com they have really high quality fragrance oils i really love this company but i've also bought fragrance oils from amazon bulk apothecary Lone Star Candle Supply. I've tried a ton of different companies and I don't really have any negative things to say about any of them. They all range in prices 
Fragrance oil can get expensive, but I will go ahead and say, do not buy the cheapest fragrance oil that you can get your hands on because typically the quality reflects that. Your freshie may not smell as nice. It's probably not gonna last as long. The fragrance will kind of fade a lot faster. And the same goes for your beads. You don't wanna buy the cheapest beads that you can get your hands on because typically the quality kind of reflects the price point. So I always go for like the middle one, like the most average price. I don't go with like the most expensive, but I'm not gonna go with the cheapest because the quality just is not there for aroma beads or fragrance oils. Now the next thing that you're going to need is some mica pigment powder. This is how I color and pigment all of my freshies. The more mica powder you use, the more vibrant the color is, but sometimes if you use too much mica pigment powder, it may affect the way your freshie bakes. So you just have to be very careful about how much you add, but a little goes a long way, which is a good thing because mica pigment powder can get expensive but I bought all of my mica pigment powders from Amazon. This one is Stardust Micas. This is a really good brand. I also bought a huge pack of mica pigment powders from the Hippie Crafter. They have some really pretty colors. But when I first got started, I would buy these mica pigment powders. Typically they would come like in a huge pack or set and it has a ton of these little tiny baggies with different colored mica pigment powders. And typically I just like to buy these because I like to see what the color looked like on the freshie, how it baked and all that, before I would turn around and buy a bigger jar of it, which was obviously significantly more money than buying a set of a bunch of tiny little packs of mica pigment powder. But if you're just getting started, I would definitely recommend trying the tiny packs just to see what you like and to see what sells if you're selling these to customers. The next thing that you're going to need is a metal cookie cutter and it needs to be metal because it is going in your oven. So I like to use just tin metal cookie cutters. I get a lot of my cookie cutters off of Amazon. I've also gotten them from several different Etsy shops online because sometimes these Etsy shops will have like sales or they'll have like bundles or they'll just have really good deals or they just have shapes that I can't find on Amazon. So now you can also use silicone molds as long as they are heat resistant and can be baked. I do really recommend trying out the silicone molds. They can can be a little expensive. In one of my past small business haul videos where I buy from other small business owners, I bought two different silicone molds from two different Etsy shops and I wanna say they range from like 18 to $25. But the details on these silicone freshies are typically way more like intricate than just the ones that you would pour into the metal cookie cutters because it's just the shape of the cookie cutter. Whereas some of these silicone ones have like fine details that show up in the freshie. The next thing that you're going to need is some roofing nails or a screw or whatever you want. I like the roofing nails because they are completely flat on one side. I've seen people not put the roofing nails in and they will just literally take their drill and drill a hole into the freshie. But why not prevent that and just avoid extra work and just take care of that ahead of time. So I just put the roofing nail in and that creates the hole for us to put our cord in later. And because we are using these roofing nails, I typically don't ever have to use these, but you may have to use some pliers to take them out. You just grab them on one side and literally push them through. But typically I rarely have to use those, but I just wanna mention that so that you have them on standby in case you do. You're also going to need a tablespoon and a separate spoon to actually put the aroma beads into your cookie cutters or molds, whatever you're using to bake them in. You're also going to need a non-stick cookie sheet to bake your car freshies on. And trust me, you want the non-stick. And something else that you're going to need that I didn't use in the beginning, but now I never bake freshies without it, is some type of cooking spray. Basically, if I'm ever using my metal cookie cutters, I just spritz a tiny bit of cooking spray on the end inside of the cookie cutter. You could also spray it on a paper towel and just like wipe the inside of it down. It just helps the freshie come out so much more easily when they're done. Then you're obviously going to need some type of string or cord or ribbon to actually hang them up in your car by your rear view mirror. I use this elastic stretchy cord, but you could use whatever string, ribbon, twine, whatever you wanted, you could use that. And then you're also going to need some mason jars or some other type of airtight container. And that is where you're actually going to pour your beads into your mica pigment powder and your fragrance oil. And you're going to let your beads cure in these mason jars until the aroma beads completely absorb the fragrance oil. 
and the same jars that I mix up the beads and I let them cure in, I literally just let them set in the jars until I'm ready to bake those freshies. And the last thing that you're going to need is some type of bag to put your freshies into. Now, I've seen a huge debate on what types of bags you should be using. I don't think it matters as long as you type in like food safe or smell proof, something along those lines. As long as you can't smell your freshie through the bag, it should be fine. All right guys, so in order to prepare your beads so that you can bake them into freshies, you have to scent them and put your mica pigment powder in ahead of time. And then they're gonna have to set in the closed mason jar anywhere from like three to four days to like a week or so. Because you have to allow the aroma beads to completely absorb the fragrance oil. And that's what makes the freshie scent last. So something interesting I learned last year was the majority of aroma beads, because they are recycled plastic pellets, some shape or form, most of them can only absorb 30% of their weight. Meaning, once they've absorbed all the oil that they can possibly absorb, they will not continue to absorb any oil. So I'm saying that because it's important that you don't use too much oil, otherwise your beads will never cure and completely dry in order to bake them. So I just wanted to mention that because I feel like I get those messages and comments all the time from people saying that their beads have been curing for over a week and they're still not close, like they're still sticking to the jar. And the majority of the time is because they probably poured too much oil compared to how many beads they have in there. And also I've noticed because I've tested out so many different fragrance oil companies, there are some that are like more oily and there are some that are more kind of like watery. So I really think it depends on the fragrance oil you're using and the quality of the aroma beads that you're using as well. Now, just in case this is one of the first videos that you're watching about car freshies and you have no idea what I'm talking about. When you pour your aroma beads in the jar and you pour your fragrance oil and your mica pigment powder, they are all wet and soaked. And if you move them around the jar, all the beads stick to the side. These beads have been curing in this jar for about a week or so. And as you can see, I can turn this any way and not a single bead. That's just leftover mica pigment powder. There's no actual beads down there. But there is not a single bead sticking to the jar. They are all completely dry. They're not sticking to each other. These beads are fully cured and ready to bake. So if your beads are sticking to each other or they're sticking to the sides of the jar at all, they are not cured. Leave them alone. Now, one tip I do have for you, if you did add too much fragrance oil to your beads and like, let's say, you filled this jar up with beads and you put fragrance oil in there, but you poured a little too much. Your beads have been sitting in there for over a week and they are not even close to being done. Then I would recommend putting them in a larger jar where there is more air to help them air out without letting out all of that fragrance oil. And if that still doesn't do it, add some more aroma beads, you know, shake it up really good and just leave them alone. Because if there is so much excess fragrance oil that putting them in the larger larger jar doesn't do anything, you need to add more beads to help absorb some of that extra oil. So I definitely just want to mention that because that is a common problem that I hear time and time again. So I just wanted to throw that in there for you guys. So now for the fun part, we are going to actually scent our beads. I'm going to show you guys how to do that in two different ways because if you've made freshies for any amount of time, or maybe you just started and you've done a little bit of research, I'm sure you've come across the whole debate between weight versus volume. How do you weigh your aroma beads and measure out your fragrance oil? Do you go by weight or volume? So just to be completely unbiased, I'm gonna show you both ways and then I'm gonna tell you my preference. Okay, so my measurement is for every four ounces of aroma beads, you're going to use one tablespoon of fragrance oil. So I'm going to pour four ounces of aroma beads into this jar. And that is perfect, that is right under the four ounce line. So this is four ounces of aroma beads according to volume. And like I said, for every four ounces, you're gonna do one tablespoon of fragrance oil. I literally just add a tiny bit at a time. Like I'm using the little nail that I'm gonna be using later. So that is just a tiny little pinch. And I think I'll do one more. And then you're just gonna take your lid, put it on tight, and then you're just gonna shake your beads until that color and the fragrance oil has completely coated all of the beads. And there you go. Now our beads are colored 
and the fragrance oil has coated all of them. So now you're just gonna leave this setting from anywhere from three days to a week or so, however long it takes you. It really depends on your climate, but as you can see, you know, now they're sticking to the sides of the jar. So I just wanted to show you that difference. Okay, so this is what they look like. So now I'm gonna do four ounces of beads and I have a mason jar that doesn't have any lines on it or anything. I'm actually going to do it by weight. Okay, so I'm hoping you guys can read the screen on this. It's kind of hard to angle it. Um, so I'm, I zeroed out my scale so it is not including the weight of the jar. As you can see, it says zero. So now I'm going to be pouring in exactly four ounces of beads. So here is exactly four ounces of aroma beads. Okay, so again, one tablespoon of fragrance oil and a pinch of mica pigment powder. Okay guys, so I tried to push down all the beads that were like sticking to the sides of the jar, but obviously, you know, I can't get all of them. But just to show you guys the difference, this one was the one that we did by volume, and this was the one that we did by weight. As you can see, the one by weight is barely more than the one by volume. So by looking at these, my first assumption is, okay, great, I get more freshies by doing the weight method, but, if you're doing the volume method, because there is just a little bit less beads, then that would lead me to believe that the scent on this one is going to last longer than this one because there's more fragrance oil to bead ratio in the volume one versus the weight one. You know what I mean? It's the same amount of fragrance oil. There's just less beads in the volume than the weight one. But at the end of the day, I have done this before. I baked them and I personally felt like this one smelt stronger, but they lasted about the same anyway. So I think whatever is easier for you, if you wanna go by the measurements on the side of your mason jar, or if you wanna go by weight because you have a scale in your kitchen and that's just really easy for you to do, then do that. I, don't, I really don't think it matters and it doesn't make much of a difference. So I don't understand why so many people feel so strongly about this that they will literally attack you for doing it by volume. But I personally don't think it matters. Do whatever you wanna do, whatever is easier for you, whatever you prefer. You do you. Okay guys, so like I said, these now have to cure for about four days to about a week or so. I've never really gone over a week mark. Now I have also heard people say that once your aroma beads completely absorb the fragrance oil and the mica pigment powder, that they have to further cure for like another week or two after they're completely dry. I don't do that. I don't agree with that at all. I think it's pointless. But like I said, to each their own, if you would like to wait another week or two for your beads, then do that. Okay guys, so now with all of that all the way, now obviously the beads that we just scented are not ready to go, but your girl has some already cured beads on standby because I'm always making freshies. So with these beads that have been curing for a week, they are all completely dry. They're not sticking to the jar at all. They are ready to go. So now I'm gonna show you how to bake these. All right guys, so like I said, I just spritz a tiny bit of cooking spray on the inside like so. And I'll just set down my cookie cutter and I'll set my little roofing nail right where I want the hole to be where the string is going to hold up the freshie in our car. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention is I do not recommend baking a bunch of different scents together. So all of the freshies that I'm putting on this pan, while some of them may be different colors, they're all the same scent, so it's okay. Okay guys, so then I just take a plastic spoon and I will just scoop them into the cookie cutters. And I like to fill mine about three fourths of the way or all the way if it's a smaller cookie cutter. Like if it's a really small one, like this skull one, I would consider small. I'm gonna fill that one all the way up to the top because they do kind of like condense and like shrink down as they bake, like the beads will kind of flatten together. So even though we're gonna fill it up all the way, by the time we pull it out, it's gonna look like it's only like halfway filled up. I just say that because I've seen a lot of people that only like fill up their cookie cutters like halfway and then by the time they pull out their freshie, their freshie is so thin that 
I don't see how the scent would even last in that very long. Not to mention the thinner they are, like, you know, they're more flimsy and I think you run the risk of them actually melting in cars which I've heard people have issues with. I've never had anyone complain of a melted freshie. I always have freshies in my car and I've personally never had a melted freshie. And then for this cow freshie, I'm gonna share um, a little tip with you guys. If you want your freshie to be multiple colors, like this is a cow head. Um, so I'm going to do like the middle of it white and then I'm going to do its ears in this brownish black color. Um, so I always just take either like a piece of paper or you can use foil or whatever. I actually took a piece of foil and I kind of shaped it to where I need my beads to separate whenever I pour them into the cookie cutter so I don't have to like sit here and try to hold a piece of paper while I'm like messing with the beads. I can just get the beads in there and then they're already like divided how they need to be. So there's a little trade secret for you. Now with these cows, I personally like to pour in the white beads first like that. And then I'll come in with the pink and put a little bit by the nose. Then I'll put some more white in there. And then I just take it out and then I just like to kind of like flatten the freshies to kind of like blend the beads together. You may need to like add more to kind of fill up some space. Okay, so there's three freshies here, like I said, all in the same scent. So I have preheated my oven to 300 degrees and I'm gonna go put these in my oven for about 10 minutes or so and we'll check on them in 10 minutes and then I will show you guys how to check to see if your freshies are done or not. And yes, I am baking those in my regular kitchen oven. I do get asked that all the time. I don't know if it's unsafe. I haven't heard about it being unsafe. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that will tell you that it is unsafe and that I probably shouldn't be doing that. But typically when I bake them, my entire kitchen and like maybe the surrounding rooms will smell like that freshy scent that I just baked. Just like when you're baking cookies in the oven, you kind of like fill your home with the fresh baked cookie smell. It's basically just like that. Once the freshies are cooled down and they are removed from the kitchen after a few hours, that smell pretty much fades. So if you are someone that's like super sensitive to like fragrances and like if you get headaches from like scents being too strong or being able to like smell like, a, like an artificial type fragrance, then I probably would recommend not doing this because it does make your kitchen smell and depending on how strong that scent is, it can kind of fill up the surrounding rooms like I said. So just be aware of that. All right guys, so it has been exactly 10 minutes. So I'm gonna pull these out and I'm gonna show you guys how to tell if your freshies are actually done. So in my first tutorial, I explained that like when your beads kind of look a little wet, they look like they're a little bit melted together. That's how you can tell when they're done. Well, since then I've come across another little trick that you can do. If you take your finger, now obviously be careful because these are hot and you poke your freshie and the beads don't stick to your finger at all, they are good to go, leave them alone. If, however, you put your finger to your beads and they pull up with your finger, like they're sticking to your finger, they are not ready, put them back in the oven, they need to melt down together a little bit more. And another trick I wanna help you guys with, because this is an ongoing issue with metal cookie cutters, because whenever you pop them out, they do bend a little bit slightly, you see how I have excess aroma beads that melted down below the cookie cutter on the bottom there? If you take a toothpick right when you pull them out of the oven, like right now, and these are still hot, you can take the toothpick around your cookie cutter and just take away all that melted excess. That way you don't have to trim that later. So I definitely recommend trying that trick for yourself. So I'm going to let these set for about 15 to 20 minutes, guys, until they are completely cooled. If you have space in your freezer, another hack that you can do is take your pan and just go put it on a shelf in your freezer and then they will cool within like five minutes or so. My freezer is currently full so I don't have room to do that so I'm gonna let these set for about 15 to 20 minutes and as long as they are completely cooled by then, then we can pop these out. 
Okay guys, so our car freshies are completely cool to the touch. They are not warm at all. So now we are ready to take off our cookie cutters and because we sprayed them, they should pop out super easily, like so. And now here is where um, you need to take out your roofing nail. So you can either take a pair of pliers and you can grab the nail and then just twist the freshie to kind of loosen it from the nail and then just push through and then pull it out like so. Or you can just do what I do. Most of the time I'll have like a towel or something laying here, um, but I'll just press it down and pull it out. Now from here, this is where I take my handy dandy scissors and I will trim these jagged edges that you see at the very top of our freshie here. So I literally just take my scissors and just trim down the sides until it is flat and there's no more jagged edges. And you don't have to do this. I just choose to because I just feel like it looks more finished. It just looks so much better when it's trimmed compared to when it's not. So then from here, you're ready to tie on your string or elastic cord, twine, whatever you're using. I like to cut about 12 inches of this elastic cord because I put my ends together like so, and then I will tie this into a knot, but I will kind of push the knot down towards the end there like this. And then you just pull really tight and then I'll take my scissors and I will trim down the excess on the end there. So now I have a secured tied elastic. So I'll just take this end and I will put it through the back where our nail was. And then I just kind of push it and slide it until it starts to come up through the front side. And, and as soon as you can see it, I just grab it, pull it a little bit so that the loop is kind of hanging over the top there. And then I will just thread the rest of the elastic through that loop and then pull. And then as you can see, it is on the elastic, secured, and this can fit over any rear view mirror because it is elastic and can stretch. But that's how I tie my freshies. Now from here, you could leave them as is or you could decorate them. A lot of the times um, I glue like fake flowers, ribbon, bows, tassel, fringe, whatever I feel like will look good. Sometimes I'll put glitter on my freshies and if you're doing glitter, then I just recommend sprinkling a tiny bit on your aroma beads right before they go into the oven and then a little bit more right when they come out while it's still hot. But, but for this particular design, because this is a skull for Halloween, I am going to actually decorate this with some puffy paint. I like to use this fabric puffy paint to decorate a lot of my freshies. It's super easy and quick to do. And anytime I put puffy paint on them, I do let them dry for a whole day just so I can make sure that the puffy paint is completely dried all the way through. That way I don't risk like smearing it whenever I'm putting the freshie in their bags when they're all done or whatever. And then there you have it, there is our freshie. So like I said, I'm gonna let this dry for the rest of the day and then I can put it in their bags. I do wanna mention that this bag is um, a five by seven and that is typically the only size bag that I buy. All of my large freshies, if they don't fit in it this way, then I just turn them to the side and then put them in long ways. And like I said, I will link all the supplies used in my video description down below for you guys. Once your freshies are completely done, they are ready to go into their smell proof bags. And I would say that they're good in the bags for a few weeks, as long as you're keeping them like in a air conditioned space, then the scent should be okay and it shouldn't fade as fast. But typically I make almost all of my freshies to order when the customer places the order so that they are getting a fresh freshie, unless it is a like special release because it's like a new shape that I'm coming out with, or it's like a seasonal drop where I'm doing like all of my Halloween or fall freshies like right now. All right guys, so there you have it. That is how you make freshies. So hopefully I answered any questions that you had, but as always guys, if you have any other questions or comments feel free to drop a comment down below if you like this video please let me know that you liked it by giving me a big thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed to my channel please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any other crafting tutorials thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one <laughs>
I don't need no man. Just kidding. Let go. Mm -hmm. la, 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 la. Okay. Okay. Where was I? Cool. 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 Is it just me or do you guys like just ever get the urge to just like Like anytime your hair touches your face, it's like get off me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me But then I know how that works. I'm gonna like be depressed and miss my long hair. So That's not happening. I'm just kidding